Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me. Now this one focuses mainly, or entirely, on the Group 3 race of this week. Daily Race B. We have five laps around Dragon Trail Seaside. Interesting circuit this. Not an easy one to get right. And the first race here, we're going to really just focus on the first lap because it's where the majority of stuff happens, or the first and second lap. Now you notice I'm in the, the trusty 911. Typically, or you know, it's the go-to car in Group Three, and we're up behind. Interestingly, interestingly, maybe the uh, Toyota FGT. Uh, very good car for corners, not, not the best for top speed. Into the hairpin. We're going to look up the inside and get the move done. Very narrow on the way in. It's going to compromise our exit, as we can see there, as he. Uh, gets the run on the way out so I went in too narrow and uh, got caught out on the way out now through there you can see that's a sign of things to come foreshadowing lap two as the car kind of skipped over that curb on that uh, triple chicane so I'm going to try for the cut back through turn one and you can see here the superior speed of the 911 up against the Toyota as I manage to swing around the outside don't give him too much space just enough he backs out eventually and I can settle into third uh, through the death chicane. Now that's the main notorious feature of Dragon Trail Seaside, of course, the chicane of death or death chicane, where many victims are claimed. And it's a well-known portal to the Shadow Realm. In fact, it's one of, the, one of the main suppliers of population to the Shadow Realm. And here we go. And that's also another portal as I go off on my own accord through that chicane, just dipping two wheels sort of inside the curb and kind of kick the car up and I settle into sixth place would you know down to the next corner this was really lucky come round here and two guys have just spun out on their own they weren't even um, they weren't even fighting or anything they just spun out they both spun out on their own so back up to fourth and we can potentially still get our third place back here as soon as I spun off there I thought oh god's sake that's it I'm probably going to turn the console up but no actually there's a chance here fight back our position. So through Death Chicane, the Spaniard not having the best of times, grazing across the wall. That wall is going to have a, a fair few new um, new sets of paintwork on it over the years as everyone keeps scraping across it. But uh, that's good for the Croatian employment. Uh, this isn't Croatia, this circuit, just in case you didn't understand that. Um, so it's good for anyone in the painting business or the barrier business in Croatia. Yes, um, the business is booming around this area simply because of that one barrier. This guy uh, a little bit wired on the exit of the triple chicane and uh, we go around the outside into third. Kind of keeps on the inside and doesn't really fight it too much so I settle into the position. Now a little bit later on into the race, so lap number five, he was still on my tail. I, need, I really needed to shake him off. So here's my tactic, pretend that you're going to crash and just hope that he follows you off. So a bit like this, going to go off and then look at the bottom right, off he goes, there we go, see you later son. Quite a convenient little tactic there, um, obviously not intended, well it, it, actually it was intended yet. Yeah. At the end, uh, finishing third, a bit lucky to get back to that position. Now this is uh, the next race, we'll go through this one quickly. So at the beginning, through Death Chicane guy ahead have the best of times he uh, has to go defensive into the hairpin this is probably the most difficult corner on the track I think this it's, it's a hard track it's not an easy track to get right that's a really difficult one to get right consistently uh, crossing the line to begin the second lap uh, the inside for the kink but the outside for the turn uh, so the German there's three Germans on the podium at this moment here going to look for a run on the way out. Kind of did this against, I did this against the Toyota, but the Toyota doesn't have a very good top end. Uh, so I could beat it, but not, not another Porsche. Def Chicane, lap number four. And we both made a mistake there. Creating further barrier uh, repair employment in Croatia. Into the, into the hairpin, I just, I just run it wide. It's a bit awkward. And this is the problem. This is the main problem I'm facing here. The fact that my qualifying wasn't that great and that I'm having to overtake people, therefore, and uh, making a hash of it. So at, at the end, levelled up to level 41 after about 41 years. It's ages to go from 40 to 41. And 
conveniently, or no, perhaps in a, a good sign was that I, I set a quick lap time there, 39.4 at the end, which is actually better than my actual lap time as you see on the right hand side. After six laps, improved to a 39.3. So I was going to really go for a good lap here. This is the tenth lap, so you see I've been here for quite a long time, I didn't have 20 minutes. Spin out, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bank my lap there, you know, nine, nine, ten laps, that's quite a long time. Uh, and I actually went back and did some more, because I think that 39.3 isn't good enough. Plenty of restarts into the wall, that barrier claiming me many times. Eventually, we got through to an attempt where I am going to be the ghost, not by much. So just bringing that lap time down slowly, like half a tenth by half a tenth. And again, hitting the barrier, hitting the barrier, getting it wrong, getting it wrong. Really trying to work out what is best. There's a couple of stars again. Improved to a 39.2. That's not a bad uh, lap time. But I know I could do a very low 39 or a 38. That is how to take that chicane. Absolutely nailed it. This turn very difficult. Two temps up. Purple sector. Another purple sector. Two temps up. Going into the final chicane. Can we hold on and potentially do a 38 or 1 minute 38? Probably not here because I've had a a uh, poor run and I'm only going to be the ghost by disappointing 0.021 and only improve to a 197 smash into the wall again coming down here we're going to look this time to try and beat that 197 I know I can do a 38 but if I get a low 39 here I'll be more than happy with that and we can go into the races so my, my previous best was a 39.5 which was really not it, it was okay, it was a good lap time, but it wasn't good enough to really put me on pole position. I would never be on pole with that lap, unless I got really lucky with the people who, who were in the lobby. And uh, through the first half of the lap, that is a good half of the lap. Ahead of Ghost, into the triple chicane. This one's really difficult to get right. Uh, you kind of have to focus on the last uh, last of the three turns. And I've, I've messed up the middle one, as you can see. I've lost a car length uh, through there, or maybe two car lengths. So that's maybe a 10. Coming down into the left, down the hill, down to second gear. Got to really use uh, the curb on the exit, maximise the track width as much as possible. Okay, so we know that the Ghost really ballsed up this final turn as well. I lost like two turns, so I can definitely still beat this Ghost with just one uh, turn left to go or two turns. So through here, taking a much better line, and then on the on the exit, you see just how much earlier I can get on the throttle because of the better line. So I'm going to beat the Ghost as we. Uh, through the final kink onto the main straight is it going to be good enough for a 38 let's see it's going to be a 39034 which i'm more than happy with after maybe 30 minutes 40 minutes of lapping and this is the kind of race you have to make the most of the, the guy in second place is nine temps all of my time nine temps that is, that's massive so this race i i mean i should win if i don't win this i really have bottled it up massively and I probably ought to just throw the console out the window and never play again. Uh, through turn one, uh, you really do have to learn your breaking points for turn one on lap one because it's different than all the other laps because you're you're going into that turn a lot slower. So you can break pretty much at the 50 board, where it's normally breaking at the end of the curve. Uh, so that you know that sets you in good stead for the race. Through the chicane, you know, the, car, the car kind of squirms as we go through there. Guy the behind still on me, three taps behind, not enough to go defensive he's going to go for a savage lunge he doesn't so through the turn we get through here and the gap is, is going up massively i think he might have got hit and the gap uh, up to about 1.3 seconds uh, crossing the line now look at this these guys are swapping so many times i can't quite fathom what the hell was going on there they swapped like eight times in about two seconds and uh, that's i mean that's good news for me because you know they're fighting and I can ultimately get away. Now look at this. This is um, this is what entering the shadow realm looks like. Uh, see, there we go. Unlucky son. So that's uh, that's him getting sent, fully sent, and ultimately winning the race quite convincingly uh, with a 39.4 during the race, which is a good lap time in a ra in, in race situation. And uh, we actually win a race for once. First time in a long time that. So this is the next race. You see the the grid. Guy second, the Spaniard, very close on lap time. So this was not going to be an easy race, this. The last one, you know, nine temps, that's massive. For this, he's only like a temp and a half off. Which, in race pace, you know, he could easily be quicker than me in race pace. I also obviously do have the advantage of track position. 
The main thing I really need to do is try and break the toe. If I can get like seven or eight temps away and just make sure he's not getting uh, my slipstream, then that would uh, help me massively. So through here, just really trying to get very close to the barrier, maybe a little bit too close of anything. We get through, okay. But then into the hairpin. He's uh, not quite close enough to go for that move. So we'll just take a normal racing line, although that is not our normal racing line. We're way too deep. We're going to keep the position, but uh, he is a barely a quarter of a second behind. You see there. Uh, in turn, though, he does have some attention from behind in the form of a big, beastly British Aston Martin driven by a German. Let's see if I can... In many ways, it's actually better to have more people behind. I, I, I think because... If it's just you versus one person, it can be very hard. But if, if there's more people behind, then at least the guy in second has to focus on defending at the same time. And uh, there may well be contact be between the people behind. So I think it's better to actually have a big pack, as weird as that sounds. Especially because if I make a mistake, then I'm going to be in more positions. But it's actually easier to defend. So through the final uh, chicane, a bit of contact through there. And I'm definitely on the back foot, really not getting on the throttle very well at all and he's uh, firmly within the sucking zone three temps behind I'm going to go sweep into the left hand side I want him to go right which is the inside for the king but then I have the inside for the uh, corner at the bottom bit of contact on the way through I've gone very narrow as a result and we're going to get through the corner just about one of the most tidy of corners you've ever seen but we get through and maybe that's good news for me now because I'd say my main challenger, the, the Spaniard there, is going down to fourth, and um, he's been displaced there by the Aston Martin and another 911 you know, driven by a Spaniard. I do now have this Aston Martin all over me. The Aston Martin really good in a straight line, so that's going to be a big worry coming uh, coming down the main straight. I do need to try and build that advantage once again. Four taps now as uh, we pull away from that hairpin, coming towards the triple. Uh, the gap comes down to a quarter of a second. You see how much he gains. He gained like two temps coming up that hill. That is how powerful my sucking skills are. So coming through here, not really got uh, got the job done as well as we would have liked. Although gap up to six temps, he hasn't taken that as well as he would have liked. And I've pulled away uh, slightly. Maybe enough as uh, if we can uh, get these last couple of quarters right. Gap uh, up to eight temps now. So I've gained maybe half a second there. In just those last couple of corners. That's good news. We can just get this one right. This one's difficult. It's actually quite misleading. You can actually really try to go in there too hot. We actually want to go in there quite slowly and get get the speed out onto this main straight. And uh, the gap there, seven tenths. It should be enough, although the gap is coming down uh, again. Uh, such is the speed of that mighty Aston Martin. So this race, this race went right down to the wire, let me tell you. So don't go away. This one's uh, This one is a good one. Setting the fastest lap at 40.5, okay, not great. You ideally want to be in the 39s around here if um, you want to be seriously thinking about winning the race. So I, I do need to improve upon that if I, I do want to really home in on that victory here. Um, now, I did hear some contact with the barrier once again. Def Chicane semi-claiming another victim as our Spanish friend moves back into second. So probably my, my biggest challenger. There he is in the purple car, back into second place. That's bad news for me. I was hoping really that those two would hold him up for the entire race, but that hasn't happened. He's, uh, he's actually made short work of him. He got back into second. Now the gap is 1.2. It might seem comfortable, but it only takes really one or two little mistakes, maybe like that, and he's back in the slipstream range. He needs to get really to, uh, to 0.6 or 0.7 and then that's it. He's, he's basically right on me. Such is the power of the slipstream. And uh, 1.2 the gap again. He's coming through here, or 1.1 now. Def chicane, lap 4, below a second and then just above a second. I'm really just hovering in the danger zone. I only need to lo lose a couple of attempts. And uh, he's back on me. He's got the faster lap so far, the, the Spaniard behind the 40.1. And I've got 40.3. To be honest, we're not lapping all that quickly. This is quite a, a poor race pace overall from, from everyone, to be honest. So, coming down the main straight, I'm going to go to the left, and I've actually made a mistake. And he's within 0.6 of a second now, so he is getting my slipstream. 
that is not good news, especially coming onto the last lap, because it means I'm now probably going to have to go defensive at some point here. Coming through here, he's actually within 0.3 or 0.4 as we go through the turn, so he's firmly uh, got me within his lock-on, and he's going to fire that missile, presumably at some point during this race, or during this final lap, and go for the move for the lead. He did make contact earlier, so perhaps he's come back for some snarky revenge. I'm going to have to go defensive there. He's very close, uh, below two temps, and that's beyond or within my parameters to go defensive into that turn, as I decide to do, and keep it behind. So, mission accomplished in that respect, I suppose. Up the hill, over the crest, sweeping right into the triple, and again, he's very close. One tenth behind. That isn't a corner that you can really go for a move, though. So all I need to do is just really try and just get it right. And I did notice that he was actually not the best through here. That's, that was kind of a weakness for him. And uh, I've actually opened up three temps. Although again, it just comes it just immediately comes back down. As soon as they're in that slipstream, stream, it just is so hard just to keep them behind. Because of, because of just how, how strong it is. It just gives them a slingshot pass, uh, pass through sometimes. So I have to go defensive here. He's... Um, uh, one tenth behind. I've been I've been overtaken here on the last lap before. I think it was Group Four when this race was uh, the daily race a couple of weeks ago. It was, I got lunged on that last turn and lost a race because of it. Now coming down the bay, uh, main straight. Here it is. He's gone to the left, and it's going to be a drag race through the line. It's within a tenth. Look at that. 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, and I've actually lost the race. I finished second after all that. After all that defending. 0.005 I lost the race oh my god he, he he was leading the race for literally 0.005 of a second and crucially it was the last 0.005 of a second okay we've had enough of the Porsche we're going to go for something different and this is my full back car this is the car I go to when I can't quite decide which car to use I just go back to this the Lexus I absolutely love this car Lexus won the um, the GT Manufacturers Cup at the weekend. Let's hope that we can carry them to some more victories here. Now, if anything, this race was going to be harder. We actually had some faster players in here. So we've got Benelli in there in third, and uh, De, uh, De Green once again in second. So I was only thinking, I was thinking that this was going to be a harder race. I think the Lexus it has really good drivability, but it is slightly slower per lap. I would say uh, maybe I could be more consistent, which would be a good thing. Another thing was I didn't have good race pace in that previous race. I didn't lap in the 39s once, which isn't very good for a race. You do need to be in the 39s if you really want to be considering winning. So I did I did many things right in that previous race. And maybe apart from defending the wrong side at the, at the end and uh, not getting good enough lap times. I should have won it really, but I just, made, I just wasn't consistent or fast enough overall. Okay, so we're gonna have to go again here. Try and avenge our loss there. A disappointing loss, you know, it's always disappointing to lose right on the line. And um, I have a chance here to try to rectify that. Now the thing I've noticed throughout the video, you may well have noticed, at the beginning my qualifying time wasn't that great. I was actually pulled eight, eight temps away from, from De Green there. The Lexus is really good on drivability. At the beginning of the video, yeah, I was, um, my qualifying time wasn't great. Therefore, starting mid-pack or like fourth, and it's just so hard to win from there. Whereas here... I've really put the time in, 30-40 minutes of constant lapping and uh, anguish of killing myself on that barrier through the chicane of death multiple times in order to get a good lap time. And I'm reaping the rewards of that now. Yes, okay, I finished second on that last one, but I've had a first and a second since getting that good lap time, whereas before I had like a third and a fourth. So that is absolutely crucial, and that is helping me massively to get these better results. Now coming down the hill, into turn one, gap uh, half a second here so I'm actually doing okay in this Lexus the, the Lexus has really good drivability it's a little bit tricky through here though if you hit this curb wrong it doesn't really respond too well you do kind of have to lift off a little bit more than you might in the 911 just to make sure the car does go through there okay but uh, two laps in and we're looking good so far the car just really it's just on rail really it just looks so easy to drive apart from maybe throttle on the way out but then the 911 has the same issue 911 it can be tricky to, uh, tricky to drive um, in, out of the slower corners uh, and then again I suppose that's true of a lot of cars. I've seen the Beetle being used on this track though, 
the Beetle's very good for that. It doesn't really oversteer at all on the way out of uh, slow turns. It's, it's just it's um, very, very planted indeed. Uh, but the Lexus is one of my favourite cars to drive. 39.5 there at the end of lap uh, two. That's much more like it. And the gap's actually opened up to 1.5 seconds. So as a result of getting an actually good lap time, I've actually opened up that gap. Coming through here, nice and steady. The car really not uh, too dramatic at all. Just just driving within myself. You know the a, the the old the old saying from Super GT: drive within yourself, and uh, you shall reap the rewards. And that's exactly what's happening right now. As I'm pulling away, and you, you just cannot keep up. Over the line at the end of that four, another 39, 39, six. That is a good uh, race pace to have. And we cross the line 2.8 seconds ahead and we can avenge our loss there and finally pick up a, a race victory in something other than a 9-11 which is good to see you know good to choose something different and there are the final results fastest lap by quite a way no one else in the 39s and we pick up our 75th win a pole a fastest lap a clean race and a victory pretty much a clean sweep as far as this game goes and I wasn't overtaken at one point. I'm going to go again just to prove that it wasn't a fluke. We've got a really fast guy here in third as well. So the guy in second, we've raced him you know, twice already. Uh, he had a 39.1 and Rono Thomas there 39.2. I've got 39.0, so close stuff. And we're going to follow with the perspective of De Green here in, uh, in second, the Spaniard, just to kind of see the differences. It's always interesting to actually watch how you drive from someone else's perspective, just to see if you can uh, notice any weaknesses and um, we're going to do exactly that here for this game and uh, grazing the barrier on the way through creating further employment for the barrier repair repair men and women of Croatia into the hairpin he's actually gone a little bit deep come back for a nice exit and this way he really has to tuck into my slipstream as we look behind you see I'm no you might notice I'm driving really far to the right hand side and most people don't seem to want to follow you you drive to the extreme side of the circuit so you're kind of just negating their slipstream uh, a little bit at least so the Lexus really drivable it is a bit of a bulky car so it doesn't always turn as uh, quite as quickly as some other cars but it is very very drivable it just it's just it's just, it's just a great rounder really I think uh, that's, that's the best way to summarize it if, if uh, another car isn't working in group 3 just drive the Lexus it, it works in most places and uh, you might no notice that at bar first. Uh, lots of people going for the full GT, which is the fastest, but very difficult. And uh, just going back to the Lexus, often the Lexus actually is the best car around there in terms of just overall ease of use. And again, just trying to take some different lines uh, onto the main straight. You see, as I kind of drive very far to the right hand side into turn one, and it kind of compromised me on the way in here, actually. It's actually really good on the brakes is De Guin, so he's actually right on me. This race may well not be as easy as, as the previous one. Again, I just need to break that toe. And we saw it earlier, a faint a mistake, and hopefully the guy behind makes a bigger one. And I'm gonna do exactly that here. I go in a little bit late, and I make him claim himself. He, he just goes full send to the Shadow Realm. And well, we're, we're gonna have a look from my perspective now. I actually braked a little bit too late. I turned in a little bit uh, later than I would have liked. And I think it put him off. And he didn't quite get a visual on the curb. Or sorry, on the barrier. And that is something you have to kind of take note of, especially if they're in um, like hood view. It's actually very difficult to see sometimes through there if you've got someone right in front of you. And uh, well, there we go. Shook him off and did the trick. You can see my lap times here, all in the 39, 39, 8, 39, 5, 39, 4, apart from obviously the first lap. This one's going to be a bit slower because it's the last lap. I took it easy. And again, with a two and a half second, or more than two and a half seconds, we're going to win the race up against all the 911s. Good stuff indeed. So the main story here, really, just do qualifying. Make sure you learn the track, get a good qualifying time, and the victories will come rolling in, no doubt, just like they are here. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Thank you for the support on the channel. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Listen.